family it's pastor john dada here i welcome you to our youtube channel i know that this word you're about to listen to is gonna bless you so please share this video share this word and if you haven't already subscribe to our youtube channel like and turn on your notification button so each time a new word is uploaded you don't miss out i look forward to hearing your testimonies god bless you as you listen to this word let's dive in exodus 3 17 to 20. i'm reading from the new living translation he says, this is the Lord speaking. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. The land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites now live. God is saying, that same land that is occupying, that is the land that is yours. That's the land I'm giving you. Sometimes God makes you a promise. I don't know why I'm even going there, but I think this is somebody. Sometimes God makes you a promise, and it looks like that promise is presently occupied. There is no place there for you. There is no room for you. God sees that it is occupied, but he's telling you that you have work to do to drive out the occupants because they're illegal occupants. It rightly belongs to you. Sometimes because our lands, our Canaan is occupied, we get discouraged. We turn back and walk away. God is telling somebody, do not walk away. It is yours. And I don't know who that word is for. Do not walk away from that Canaan that is presently occupied. Whatever that Canaan may be to you, it is yours. Amen. As I continue reading. So he says, the elders of Israel will accept your message. Then you and the elders of Israel must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. So please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord. To the Lord our God, verse 19, God still now says, But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go. The hand of God is a miracle producing, miracle performing hand. I am speaking on our theme this morning, witnessing the hand of God, the hand of God. He says, I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles. The hand of God performs miracles. Is there a miracle that you are trusting God for in this season? Is there something that you are believing God for in this season? Lift up your voice right now. I believe to say, Father, by your hand that performs miracle, let that miracle be birthed in my life in the name of Jesus. If there is anything, any miracle at all that you are believing God for, that you are looking unto God for, say, Father, by that hand that performs miracle in my life, perform this miracle over this matter. If you are not in need of a miracle, don't bother praying. But if there is something you are trusting God for, you are believing God for, lift up your voice where you are by your mighty hand that performs miracle. Perform that miracle in my life, in my home, in my body, in my health, in my job, in my ministry, in my career, in my academics. Perform that miracle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So God gave Moses and the Israelites a word. He made them a promise. A promise of deliverance. A promise of liberation. A promise of hope. He gave them hope. When someone makes a promise to you, they give you hope. When they say to you, come to me tomorrow, I will see what I can do. They haven't even told you what they will do. You just shared your problem to them and they said, I will see what I can do. That's a glimpse of hope. Like Tesco says, every little help. So it does not matter how much of help the person can offer as long as the person offers help. So it gives you hope. So God was saying to them, I will rescue you. I have promised. He made a promise to them. So that promise was hope. That promise, he said, was hope. And then in that same breath, the same one who said, I have promised to rescue you. I have promised to deliver you, to give you the land of Canaan. It does not matter if the, all the sites, the Jebel sites and all the sites are there. I have promised to give that land to you. In the same breath, God said, hmm. But I know the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last, he will let you go. I don't know if anyone is paying attention to what I'm reading. 
I need you to see what I saw in this text. A prophetic word was about to be resisted. A prophetic word was about to be opposed. God had given a word. That is a prophetic word that he has given to most to go tell the Israelites. I am coming to deliver you. There is hope. I have seen how you've been oppressed by your taskmasters. I am coming to take you, to pluck you out of the hands of your taskmasters. That is a prophetic word. Then he says, but the king of Egypt will not let you go. That's an opposition to the word that has just gone forth. That's a resistance to the word that has just been spoken. But the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, will not want to let you go. That's an opposition to a prophetic word that has been said. No wonder. In Paul's letter to Timothy, he said in 1 Timothy 1.18, he says, over the prophetic word that has gone ahead of you, over the promise that has been said concerning your destiny, over that word that has been said concerning your future, wage a good warfare. He said, fight is not just about the word alone. It's not just about the prophetic word alone. Concerning that word that has gone forth, let that word inspire you to fight until it becomes flesh in your life. Let that word inspire you to travel in the place of prayer until you carry that word as your testimony and your evidence. So God said, that, but the king of, of Egypt will not let you go. He now said, I will raise my hand. That means even God himself realized it's not just enough to give a prophetic word. I have to wage war for this word I have spoken to come to pass. I have to fight for this word I have spoken to come to pass. He said to Moses, I will fight. I will act. I will arise. It's not just enough that I'm giving the word. That is God himself. Now if God, the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth gave a word and still said he has to arise to act to defend that word, to watch over that word, to ensure that that word comes to pass by performing miracles, by defeating Egypt, by that is what. If God can say so, what makes you think that because the prophetic word has gone ahead of you, has been spoken concerning you, that you will just fold your hands and sit down and wait for that word to come to pass whenever it decides to come to pass? If God can arise to wage war for his word to come to pass, what makes you think that you should not wage war? You should just sit down because they said, you will be blessed. You will be a billionaire. You will be this. You will be great. And you think you just sit down. The word has gone forth. Just sit down. Be sipping your coke or whatever it is you're sipping. And you just wait for the word to come. Kesara, Sarah, what will be will be. God has said it. You've got to travel. You've got to fight. You've got to war in the place of prayer. In Numbers chapter 13, Bible tells us, 12 men were sent out to spy the land. Time doubted the possibility of them conquering the land because they were intimidated by all the sites that were there, the Hebrides, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, and all that. But two said we are able to conquer the land, Joshua and Caleb. They said we are able to. Then a word came to Caleb through Moses. God gave a word and said that Canaan will be your inheritance. Not just your inheritance, but your descendant inheritance forever. God gave Canaan to Caleb. Now, the Bible tells me in Joshua chapter 14, 45 years later, 45 good years, at the time the prophetic word came, Caleb was 40 years old. So in Joshua chapter 14, he came back to Joshua. He said, a word had gone ahead of me 40 years ago, 45 years ago through Moses. God had said through Moses that Canaan is mine. And I have now come to take what is mine. And I'm wondering, why did you have to wait 45 years? Because he thought, because God had said it, so the inhabitants of Canaan would say, Oh, Caleb, come, come, come into Canaan. Come inhabit the land. Plant and build vineyards. Build fields. Do whatever you want to do. Make wine out of the grapes. He waited for 45 years. Then he realized, if I don't go content for this word, I will die without carrying this word. 45 good years, he waited. He waited. It does not matter who the word of God comes through. It does not matter how it comes. If God like opens the sky and let the fire fall physically for you to actually believe it is God. You have a path to play for every word that has been spoken concerning you. You want to see the hand of God? You have a path to play. God to put a demand on that word. You've got to press in in the place of prayer. He had to now go to Caleb and to Joshua 45 years after. When he realized that I have waited and waited and waited for this word. I realize now that I've got to go content for it. He now realized by faith, like Paul said, ha, ah, over that word that has been spoken concerning you, wage a good warfare. He actually said to Joshua, I am ready to fight. That was the word he used. He said, I am ready to fight. For my strength now is as it was when the word was first spoken. So he realized, 
I've got work to do for this land. I've got to go content for what is mine. And Joshua, I am ready to contend. It was when he rose to go content for the word that was spoken concerning him, that was when he was able to carry his promise. If a word has been spoken concerning you, you cannot, you can't afford to fold your hands and go to bed and sleep because hell is let loose. As soon as that word has been said concerning you, all hell is let loose to make sure that that word does not come to pass. They will fight you with everything you have. The enemy will release all his weapons and begin to fight you so that word does not come to pass. Until Jesus Christ, you know, was, was affirmed by the Holy Spirit and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to me. There was no word. It was only after that that the devil came to him. As soon as a word has advertised you, has been said concerning you, all health is left in you divine. That is why you have work to do. That's why you can't afford to fold your hands. It's not just enough to receive a prophetic word from you. It's not just enough. We celebrate prophecies. And that's why I feel sorry for people who are just going to churches looking for prophecies. You celebrate, you celebrate it's, it's, it's a very good gift in the body of Christ. We celebrate it. But after you've received the prophecy, what do you do with what you've received? You've got to run with it. You've got to put a demand on it. You've got to press in. Apostle Paul actually said in another translation, he said, let this prophetic body that you've received inspire you. So because you know that this is the future God has for you, let that be your motivational factor. Let it be your propelling force to fight for that thing you have heard to come to pass. It's okay that you are folding your hands if you did not hear. But for the fact that you have heard, let that inspire you to go to war. Hallelujah. Now, God said, unless my hand forces Pharaoh, he will not let the Israelites go. Unless my hand forces Pharaoh. And I began to ponder. There are certain victories, certain deliverances, achievements, promotions, lifting, open doors. You will not see. You will not enter unless the hand of God is involved. He said, unless my hand rises against Pharaoh, he would not let you go. There are some things that you will not be able to come into if God's hand is not involved. And that is why our text for the month, Psalm 118 and verse 16 says, the Lord's right hand gives victory. Hey, yada, yada. The Lord's right hand gives victory. Over every war, the Lord's right hand gives victory. Over every verdict, the Lord's right hand gives victory. Over every case, the Lord's right hand gives victory. Over every doctor's report, the Lord's right hand gives victory. Over every situation troubling you mentally, emotionally, physically, the Lord's right hand gives victory. In the name of Jesus, he said, the psalmist said, the Lord's right hand gives victory. The Lord's right hand conquers. God has given us a word. He said, this is the season where we witness his hand, but we also have a part to play. A, a, a part to play. We have to put a demand on this word to see this word come true for us. The Lord's right hand gives victory. The Lord's right hand conquers. He defeats the enemy. Is there anything with the similitude of Pharaoh in your life resisting you, opposing you, not wanting the word of God to become flesh in your life? The Bible and the word was made flesh. All of a sudden, the word became real to them. They could touch the word and they could feel the word. It was palpable, it was tangible. Is there anything not wanting the word of God to become tangible in your life, resisting and opposing the word of God? Come on, someone lift up your voice where you are and say, Father, let your right hand arise. Haya, Kandoroba, Shandaya over everything that represents Pharaoh in my life, in my marriage, in my career, in my job. Let your right hand arise. Is there any Pharaoh that has said to you that you can only go this far and no further? Say, Father, let your right hand arise in defeat. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In 1 Kings 
Ecclesiastes chapter 18 and verse 46. The Bible says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. If you are a Bible scholar, you will convert unto this story. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, giving him supernatural strength. This is from the Amplified. The hand of God gives a man supernatural strength. It is that extra in the life of a man that makes the man not to operate like every other man, that separates the man from every other man, that distinguishes the man from every other man, that makes the man produce results not applicable to ordinary men. That's what the hand of God does. The Bible says, the hand of God came upon Elijah, giving him supernatural strength. He gathered up his loins and outran Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel, nearly 20 miles. Now, 20 miles is the distance between Accrington to Preston. Precisely, when I checked it, it's 19.8 miles, so that's approximately 20 miles. So imagine a man not walking, not jogging, running, without stopping for a drink. I have just taken water. Without stopping for a drink, without resting, without panting. <laughs> He's going non-stop. Now, if we know the story properly, he's, this same man prayed and sealed the heavens and there was no rain. And this same man prayed and unlocked the heavens. And he told the king, they have, he said, the rain is coming. Before the rain wets you, before you get soaked in the rain, start going home. Ahab went on a horse. He rode on a horse. The average horse, the one that's not even trained for race. You know, we have race horses. So the average horse, has not even trained for races, runs the minimum of 50 miles per hour. It has strength. Ahab had already gone ahead of Elijah because he sent the message to him to start going home, start moving, go back to Jezreel. He had already gone ahead of him. And all of a sudden, Elijah just passed him with the speed of light. Have you guys watched Flash? How that guy just go, phew, with the speed of light. Elijah just passed him. He was surprised. I started the journey before this guy. And this guy did not just catch up. Hey, look, hey, 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 somebody catch it. This guy did not just catch up with me. This guy overtook me. Listen, in life, some people may have gone ahead of you. Some people, you started with them together. And all of a sudden, for some reason, you were slowed down. The affairs of life, things in life slowed you down. You could not pick up the pace as you started with her. And they went ahead of you. They achieved so much. Hey, Yakanda, dear. The hand of God that came upon Elijah and granted him divine speed. Not just to meet up with Ahab. He met up with Ahab and he overtook Ahab. Let that hand rest upon you. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. The hand of God that grants a man speed. Grants me speed in career, in destiny, in ministry. Whatever it is you do, ask the hand to grant you speed. Hey, the cat, I had that. Rakanda leba shunda. Ira bakanda leba doba zende. Rakakakakakakaka. Alakata leba yadada. The hand. Ashata. Ere bashata. Ele boyoto daya. The hand that grants a man speed. Grant me speed. Somebody lift your voice. Speed by the hand of God. Speed in my career. Speed in my work with God. Speed in my ministry. Speed in all I do. I receive speed. I receive speed by the hand of God. Hey. Hey. Kakale basho katali ba yedede. Randa nama na zanda liba doba ya gadaya. Reke ke 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 tada ba tada ba daba ya. Raka kaka ka yede ba tada ya. Renda da kanda riba doba ya. Renda da da doko to liya ba da kata ya. Esa kata tata ya. Ira kaka tada ya. Everything that tied you down. That you couldn't go further. That you couldn't advance. That you couldn't make progress. Break. Raka te le de de de. Break. In the name of Jesus. Kanda riba do kata ye. Abale kata ya da da. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, help me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I can imagine Ahab when Elijah met with him and overtook him. I can imagine his surprise. He was shocked. I'm sure he was 
Then, I said that was not enough to just catch up. You have overtaken me. Ah, I'm sure he was shocked. Because it is naturally impossible. He is on hot. Try it for that matter. And someone on his legs. The hand of God makes a man produce unusual miracles. The hand of God makes a man produce unusual results. And I decree to you in the name of Jesus that the hand of God in this season will make you begin to produce unusual results in everything you do. The results that are not common to man in the name of Jesus. Somebody's overtaking. Listen, in the realm of the spirit, overtaking is allowed. It is allowed. Amos chapter 9 and verse 13. Quickly put it up there for me. Oh, let me put it up there whilst I open it. Because that was not in my notes. Amos 9 13. Let's quickly read for you to know that in the realm of the spirit, overtaking is allowed. Where is the name? Mm. Let me let me read a different translation. So much more, it's so powerful. I think it's the message translation. Let me find. Okay, now the Bible says, please, you can take the baby out. That'll be great. Thank you. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to be happening so fast. Your head is spinning. If, if, even you, you will not be able to understand it. Do you think Elijah could understand what, that he overtook that man? He was like, God was going here, but because the hand was there, he could not slow down. As the hand of God is upon you, there is no slowing down for you. Even when you try to slow down to make them comfortable, you will not slow down. Elijah himself could not understand. The Bible says things are going to be happening so fast your head is swing. It will be one thing fast on the heels of another. One breakthrough on the... Before you finish celebrating this breakthrough, another one has come. Before you finish celebrating this testimony, another one has come. It is back-to-back -back breakthrough. Back-to-back -back testimony. Back-to-back -back open doors. Back-to-back -back victory. It says you won't, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. Everything, everything will be happening at once. Behold, the days are coming. Now, let me read that translation. Says the Lord, that the poor man shall overtake the wicked. Imagine somebody planted four months ago. And on the fifth month, it's supposed to be harvesting what he has planted. And I went to plant last. And for some reason, we both go to the farm. It that he planted four months ago has not bothered. Nothing has happened. I, I am harvesting. <laughs> hey, that is your story. Listen, listen, it is not, I'm not coming to excite you. If I'm telling you the things without showing you evidence in the word of God, then I'm telling you the story. This is the word of God. In the realm of the spirit, in the kingdom in which me and you operate and I part of, Overtaking is allowed. The hand of God that caused a man to overtake, let that hand rest on you and all you do in the name of Jesus. That hand rests powerfully on you. Ahab looked at this man. It was not only impossible for this man to overtake him. He was wondering what's happening here. What's going on here? How can this man do this when the hand of God is upon a man like himself? The impossible becomes possible. That's what the hand of God does. The impossible becomes possible. And I pray for you that in this season, that which everyone has said is impossible, by the hand of God, it becomes possible for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that people have declared impossible, doctors have declared impossible, lawyers have declared impossible, jobs, employees have declared impossible, systems and structures have declared impossible, policy says it is impossible. I decree by the hand of God, it becomes possible for you in the name of Jesus. The hand of God overturns verdicts for you. It begins to work in your favor. The hand of God pulls down systems and structures that are not working for you in the name of Jesus. That is what the hand does. That's what the hand of God does. Hallelujah. It makes the supernatural becomes natural for you. The supernatural, you begin to operate in the supernatural naturally, without stress, with ease. May that be your testimony. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As I round up, Psalm 138 and verse 7, the Bible says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the you will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Some of us are in trouble. It is financial trouble. 
It may be health trouble. It may be marital trouble. You know, sometimes we all get dressed and nobody knows what anyone is doing to because the clothes are covering every one of us. Makeup for us, for women, is covering everybody. They're all smiling. How are you? Oh, I'm blessed and lifted and highly favored. Oh, everybody just know, forming and putting on a mask. But some of us are in deep waters of trouble. Ha, Katariba Shangai. The Bible said that by his hand, he stretched that hand and he pulled me out of that deep water. I am decreeing to somebody that whatever trouble you've been finding yourself right now, any trouble that you are in, going through, or that the enemy has cooked in, is waiting for you in the future, the hand of God stretches in and pulls you out of that trouble in the name of Jesus. I want you to turn it to power now. I begin to say, Father, by your hand. Pull me out of this trouble. You know what is the trouble to you. You know what is troubling you. You know that thing that makes you not sleep. That thing that takes your joy. Even when you try to forget, as long as you remember, you just become sad. Say, Father, by your hand, pull me out. The hand of God is mighty to save family. The hand of God is mighty to save. By your hand, pull me out of every trouble, of every danger, of every calamity, of every disaster. Pull me out. Pull me out. Pull me out. Arakada badabaye. Rabababa do badabaye. Chandari bado badabaye. Leboro bobo badabaye. Lekende riba baba kande. Rakaka kata de badakande. Rada da da kondo robo shondo robo zondo re bashanda. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm going back to where we started from. Amen. Let there be no distraction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now Exodus 13, the three. As I round up again. And the past three minutes, I round up like 10 times to open it. <laughs> so as I round up again, <laughs> Exodus 13 13, this is right where we started from the story of Exodus Moses. Now the Bible says here, and Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand the Lord brought you out of this place. By strength of hand. So they had come out of Egypt and they looked and Moses was recalling to them. He says, remember this day. Can you remember? This time last week, you were being flogged. This time last week, you were being oppressed. You were being punished. Your taskmasters were dealing with you. Hi, yeah, the cats are yeah. I don't know if somebody looks back and remembers that. Hey, this time last year, I could not feed myself. This time last year, I had no roof over my head. This time last year, I couldn't even pay my way out. This time last year, Moses was saying to them, this time last week, this time last year, this time last month, we were oppressed. But by the mighty hand of God, we have come out. The hand of God makes your testimony very sure. The hand of God delivers to your testimony. Somebody lifts up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you because I know that by your hand, my testimony is sure. My testimony is sure by your hand. For how far you have come, it is even the hand of God. And for how far you are going, you will see his hand again. Say, Lord, I thank you because I know my testimony is sure. Lift your voice one more time and say, Lord, I thank you for the testimonies. Your hand is set to deliver in my life. I thank you for the testimonies. Your hand is set to deliver in my home, in my job, in my career. Over this matter, over this matter, your hand will deliver to me testimonies, 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 breakthrough, victory, joy, laughter. Hey, Lakota Zadaya. Come on, raise your song. Give God a song. Rise to your feet. Give God a song of praise. Give God a song of gratitude for the victory his hand has brought you. For the victory his hand has brought to you. Give him thanks. Somebody's song is going to be what I waited for has finally come to pass. What I waited for, what I was knocked over, what I was ready to kill over. The hand of God has finally delivered. Somebody give him thanks. What we waited for. What we waited for as a family. What we waited for as a church. What we waited for as individuals. The hand of God has finally delivered. I carry my testimony. By the hand of God, I carry my evidence. I carry my laughter.
mighty hand of God. Oh, shaka da da ba ya da da. Ayakate ye. What we waited for has come to pass. See what. Hey, sing it like you mean it. Oh, see what the Lord. Can you see what the Lord has done? Tell that thing. See what the Lord has done. Oh, what we waited for. 